GRCC, um, for many years, as you guys know, we provide one thing in particular, and those are credentials, right? You think about GRCC, you think either about an associate degree, a certificate, whatever, how long that takes you. So when you look at employment, you know, the employers, you guys, you want those credentials. And so for the last 15 years, a lot of the work that I do with my coworkers is career pathway development. And so we learned a lot in the last 15 years, particularly in the last seven years. And when you think outside of the box and you know, connect outside of the box, about seven years ago, that's when we decided we can't do that everything. GRCC is not the one stop for career pathways. So we decided to be very intentional and reach out to certain organizations and partner with them. Everything you heard, I just want to stand up and say amen, you know, about being a father and, and about how to everything starts at the top. And, and then collaboration. Everything you heard today, we worked really hard in this area, especially at the community organization level, and GRCC and Talent 2025 and a lot of others, HBA, ABC, to be collaborative. But saying that, did we really go out and reach into the community? Who heard, you know, who read about three years ago an article from Forbes magazine? Anyone familiar with that article? I'm going to tell you. Hopefully, whenever it's usually when I say Forbes, people know what I'm talking about. Grand Rapids, or Grand Rapids, the city of Grand Rapids and the surrounding area usually gets voted one of the best places to live, right? Usually, typically, we're best to raise a family, which is very true, right? But Forbes magazine three years ago said that's very true, but we're second to last in one area. And what do you guys think that is? The advancement of colored people in the career pathways. To, to get a house, to be a strong father, to, to have the opportunity to be just as successful in Grand Rapids area. So why, why did I bring that up? It's GRCC had the privilege of getting um, a little foundation money from the Kellogg Foundation to really be intentional around career pathways to work in our neighborhoods in Grand Rapids that are not seeing the same success as a lot of us. To do that work, we knew that we couldn't go in alone. So, what we usually do sometimes in higher ed is we develop programs, we create classes, and people will come, right? That's, that, that was our, our thinking. People will come if we develop it. But we found out sometimes people don't come because we really didn't stop and listen to what they're looking for, especially in the workforce area. Are they already working? Can they come to daytime classes? Can, you know, maybe they're working the typical seven to three or eight to four, and they can't come to our classes during the day. So we relied on our partners in the area, especially, you know, there's a lot of them in this room. Um, real quick, a story about one of our new partnerships was with the Hispanic Center, the Literacy Center of West Michigan. And the need was around machine CNC. I know we're here in construction, and we can do this career pathway development with any sector. Uh, but this one was around machine CNC. We did a contextualized ESL class that was just around CNC. And so everyone that was coming into this class was learning English, was strengthening their English skills provided through the Literacy Center, but also it was around a job that's going to give them at least a good starting entry-level wage. Um, a lot of times we don't, you know, you heard the $10 stories, you heard I'm going to go back on the bridge. Our credentials usually in workforce work, uh, development can provide a good starting wage. So we went and we, the Hispanic Center went out, always had, they already had the trust in the community with the people that wanted the good jobs. They were already working already, but they needed to make a better wage so they didn't have to work one, two, three jobs. So that's, that's just the story of what we do at GRCC, Tassel Tech. We listen to our partners, we go into the community. We're very intentionally, because people that are coming through our doors right now are living in those neighborhoods that are not seeing the same success as many of us. So I'm excited to be here. Uh, we work hard with the Essential Needs Task Force uh, we also work with Talent 2025. We work with all these groups to be collaborative, but to really to start at that top level and get to those hiring managers too, right? Because those supervisors, we know if the change doesn't happen at the top, especially with the supervisor, um, some of the people that we're training, we can train all day, but they're not getting the opportunity to get that job. 